So these lunatic Israelis have gone and bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus, in Syria's capital. I mean, have you ever heard of something so insane and ludicrous? This is where the embassy is, okay? This is in Damascus, in Mezze. Mezze is, is sort of an upscale neighborhood. You have a lot of embassies. As a matter of fact, the Canadian embassy is right next to the Iranian embassy. And the annex, do you see where my mouse is? The annex, the building that is adjacent to the embassy, that is part of the compound, was bombed. The Israelis, they, they used an F-35 jet. They fired six missiles and they killed at least five people. We're now hearing it's eight, but it's at least five according to the Iranian ambassador in Damascus. Now, before I, I continue, we, this goes without saying that this is an attack on Iran. It's, it's not just an attack on Syria. It's an attack on Iran because a, an embassy, a diplomatic premises, is a protected land, a piece of land, and it is considered land that belongs to the, uh, the guest or, or the guest country, okay? This is, this is inviolable. You, you cannot touch an embassy, just like you cannot touch diplomatic personnel, right? You cannot do this. So when you go in and you attack the Iranian embassy, it could be any embassy in the world. It could be the Iranian embassy in Canada, the Iranian embassy in London, the Iranian embassy in Damascus, it's an attack on Iran. So, so this marks a major escalation, a major, major escalation. Not only is it an attack on Iran, it is an, an unbelievably egregious violation of the 1961 Vienna Convention, which protects diplomatic personnel and premises. You can't even stand in front of an American embassy or an Israeli embassy without them barking at you like dogs. You can't even stand. Try it. Go, go and just stand. Do, do nothing but literally stand. They will bark at you. But it's okay for them to fire six missiles at an Iranian embassy. That's okay. It's okay to do that, right? That's, that's fine. This is the destruction. Let me show you the destruction. I mean, it's a beautiful building, I must say. The, the, I cannot look at it without saying that the Iranian architecture is be beautiful. The, but nevertheless, the, you, you see the, the sad sight. Here's more of the, the destruction. <laughs> Look at the flag. Look at the flag. You know, the first thing that I said when, when, I, when I saw um, or heard rather that some lunatics were saying, well, you know, it's not, it's not really the embassy, it's next to the embassy. No, that's not how the embassies work, you absolute clown. A anyone who tells you this is a clown. They, the quarters, diplomatic staff have quarters that could be miles away or literally in the next building. And, it, and lo and behold, just after I said that, I, I discovered that the Iranian ambassador lives in this building that was leveled. Do you understand? They, they, not just, they, they didn't just attack the Iranian embassy. They attacked the ambassador's residence. And they killed people, if that's not enough for you. I mean, you know, the, the splitting hairs at this point is... is it, it's, it's, it's stupid. Uh, there's no point in it. This is an attack on Iran, and it's an attack on the embassy, period. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is uh, the, this quarter in, in Meze. They also hosted the UNDOF headquarters here. So that's one of the UN uh, peacekeeping and observer missions. They used to host it here and uh, they moved it up to the Golan Heights. Uh, this is a couple of decades back. Um, just so you know, here's another photograph of, of the explosion of the, of the, the attack rather. And uh, you can see the building is on fire. The embassy is on fire. Here's a close up. And there's, uh, there's footage of the Syrian foreign minister arriving on the scene. There he is, Faisal uh, Mikdad, that's him. And he phoned the, he phoned the uh, Iranians as well. You can see here he's on, he's on call with them. From inside the embassy. Right. Yeah. So. That, this is as far as footage goes, and the targets, obviously, I Iran itself, but we have a couple of names also, and it, they, they've assassinated, essentially, uh, one of the, the main linchpins, right, of, of, of the Iranian presence in Syria, because you'll remember that, that the West, they sent ISIS, they sent Al-Qaeda, they sent a million groups. It wasn't just the West, it was also their allies, Turkey, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar. And so Russia and Iran and Hezbollah intervened to help Syria, and they still have military advisors there. And so they killed one of them uh, in December. His name is Musavi, and now they've killed another one, right? The, these are all in the rank of Brigadier General. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really scandalous, right? Riza Zahidi and also Amin Allah, that's General, Brigadier General Hussein Amin Allah, and there's also a third one. But as I said, the casualty list is still uh, coming up. There's also the AP, AP were reporting that some guards were killed. So it's not, it's not just these high-ranking military advisors and officers that the Iranians have in Syria. It's also just part of the, the embassy staff, right? Here's the, uh, the Iranian ambassador. Speaking afterwards, the diplomatic missions have been targeted this time, and this is in violation of international law. It's a crime that actually shows the true nature of the Zionist regime. Not regarding the Iran's reaction, as you said, in the past six months, uh, we have seen an escalation of such attacks. Military sites have been targeted where Iranian advisors are present, they come under attack. So what's Iran's, what will Iran's reaction be? Now, this exactly has to do with the developments in the region. The Zionist regime is reaching a cul-de-sac and an impasse. So the closer it gets to the impasse and dead end, the more crimes it commits. So, so far we have not seen any crime at this scale of, of this nature. We have international law, we have uh, certain conventions, diplomatic conventions that have been already broken. Some of our diplomats have already been killed. So this, it depends, you know, it has to do with this a dead end of the regime is facing. He's trying to blame others. He's trying to actually uh, distract public attention. And uh, regarding his failures uh, uh, by resistance fighters in Gaza, so naturally, it's natural for them to do such things. And more naturally is that Iran has never left any crimes of the Zionist regime without an answer. So definitely, the Zionists and their allies know that in proportionate to their crime that they have committed, they need to await 
a proper response on the basis of Iran's choosing in the right and place and time. Now, let me let me give you let me give you a few more uh, before I, I give you my analysis. Let me just show you a few more headlines from the press to show you how scandalous these people are, because it's you, you, you can never talk about international relations without observing how disgusting the media and the press are. This is the BBC, for example, and they say Israeli strike destroys Iran consulate in Syria. And they put Israeli strike in, in quotation marks as if, you know, as if it's, it's unclear, as if, you know, it's uncertain. It's, it's not really sure that it was the Israelis. So we're putting it in quotation marks. Like, we're, we're not saying that it's an Israeli strike, but, you know, it, it could be. Well, what, what does this mean? Who else would be responsible for this? The Iranians bombed themselves? You think Syria did this? Did, did uh, I don't know, Mongolia bomb the Iranian embassy? Did China bomb the Iranian embassy? Who, who has been bombing Syria and attacking Iran? The, the airstrikes, just for, forget the Iranians for a second. Syria itself. The, the Israelis have been bombing Syria almost on a weekly basis. Maybe a, li a little bit less uh, 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 often, let's say, every two weeks. It, it doesn't matter. We're talking about hundreds of airstrikes, hundreds. It, I wouldn't be surprised if the number is above 1,000 by now in the last 10 years. It must be. It must be. The Israelis admit this themselves. They've done hundreds of airstrikes. We don't need them to, but we, we, we have that as well. So... Who would do this except the Israelis? We know it's them. How dare the BBC? This is, they, they act like this, they're, they're good reporters or something, like they do honest journalism. They're the biggest liars. They're so scandalous. These people have no moral, val you know, moral standing whatsoever. They have no journalistic uh, uh, prestige. They have no journalistic standards. They have nothing, nothing uh, to back up their work. This is something I came across by accident. And it, it just, it shocked me. And an, another thing, for example, here, you see the Associated Press. They say an Israeli airstrike has destroyed the consular section of Iran's embassy in Damascus, killing or wounding everyone inside, Syrian state media said. Okay, let, let me sh destroy the mainstream media in just 30 seconds and show you how proper journalism is done. You do not write like this. This is garbage. This is toilet paper. This is horrific. The headline should be, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Period. Don't fill this garbage up. Stop, stop writing 10,000 mile long sentences. What is this? And, and they say, destroy the consular section. You mean they bombed the embassy? Yes, thank you. They bombed the embassy. Why don't you just say that? What's wrong with you? Your brains don't work. You can't type. And then they say, Syrian state media said at the end, what, what, why are you talking to me about Syrian state media? What do you say? What do you say? You call yourself journalists, right? What do you say? Who did this? Do you have a brain? If you don't know, if you can't tell that this, the Iranian embassy was bombed and the Israelis did it, then don't report about journalism. Don't, don't report about the Middle East. Go report about the sports section. Go talk about football or something. Le leave geopolitics, leave international affairs to the professionals and go do another job. Become a teacher, become a plumber, become, I don't know, but do something else. This is not for you. What is this rubbish? And, and, you know, the thing is, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with Syria. It's just that they have filled people's mind with, oh, it's the state media. Like, it's some kind of, you know, it's intrinsically bad. It, it, it's, it's bad by nature. So don't trust it because the Syrian state media says so. I trust Syrian state media 50 times more, 100 million times more than I trust the AP or the BBC. Without question. You know why? Because they're not going to bullshit me like this. Unbelievable, these people. They're unbelievable. They call this journalism. They're crazy. They're out of their minds. So let's talk about why they did this. Let's talk about why they did this. My analysis. The Israelis have just pulled out of the Al Shifa hospital complex in Gaza. The atrocities there, I'm going to talk about them in a, in a second, in a separate segment. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. I mean, there are literally hundreds of people that they executed. Hundreds of people. They want to take attention away from that. They don't want the international press, if they have any, uh, uh, you know, if they would even bother to. 
remember, th this war in Gaza is because of social media that people actually know what's going on. It's not international press. They're garbage. But they, do they don't want anyone, the journalists that are in Gaza, they don't want uh, social media to be flooded with the images of what's happening at Al Shifa. So to hide their massacre, they're trying to escalate and, and do something that, that surpasses their crimes in, in, in the Al Shifa hospital complex. And they've partially succeeded. I say partially because I began now with talking about this story and then I will talk about Shifa. I will cover both. But other people, they will completely lose focus. They might lose focus. And it's understandable because this marks a sharp escalation, right? In, in international affairs, bombing uh, another country's embassy is, is uh, lunacy. You know, th this is, you're asking for a war. You're asking for a war. Let, let me explain something to you as well. When it comes to... When it comes to the Al Shifa hospital, they also arrested 900 people. They've detained around 900 people. So that's one reason. This is one reason the Israelis could have done this. They want to distract from their atrocities in the Al Shifa hospital. The second reason, possible reason. Yesterday, look what the Iraqis did. The Iraqis struck at, at uh, the Israeli port of Eliat, or, you know, it's called... Um, um, rush, rush, originally. So this strike was very big, right? It was, it was very, very um, heavy. And the Israelis are perhaps angry at that and taking revenge by bombing the, uh, uh, the Iranian embassy. Because uh, as you know, the, Irani the Iranians support the Iraqis. It's not like the media say where they say, oh, well, the Hashd al-Shabi, the PMU, you know, they're, they're Iran-backed rebels or Iran-backed uh, militants or whatever. No, I don't, I don't care who backs them, whether it's Iran or China, I really don't care. I care who they are, they're Iraqis, and what they're doing. They're fighting American and Israeli occupation. But, but there is Iranian support, without question. So this, this could be a possible connection, right? Another, another, third, another third reason, and this, this is, again, a potential uh, explanation for why the Israelis did this, why they bombed the Iranian embassy. They want to provoke the Iranians into retaliating. Remember that Netanyahu is doing very, very badly inside of Israel, right? He has the uh, uh, people who have been trying to get rid of him for, for you know, a long time now, to, uh, trying to kick him out of politics. He has the split in this coalition with the ultra-Orthodox, with their military service. The Supreme Court have given him about a month to sort this out. This is, this is from just a few days ago with the Haridim, you know, these ultra-Orthodox who don't serve in the military. So, to, to take, you know, to distract from these internal issues, he wants, to, he wants to start a war with Iran, and also, at the same time, bring in the United States to help him finish that war, because the Israelis need the U.S. to be drawn in to an escalation. Uh, to be drawn into a war with Iran so that they can actually finish the job because the Israelis can't do it by themselves. And frankly, I think even with the Americans, you know, short, short of a nuclear war, they can't win. Where's the proof? I, I look at the last six months. There's your proof. But in any case, the Israelis think like this. This is how the Israelis uh, uh, try to strategize. The other thing also is that the Israelis have been attacking... The UN, in, inside of Lebanon, they've been attacking Hezbollah officials, they've been attacking uh, medics, paramedics. So you, you have to understand that the Israelis are trying to escalate, not just with this embassy bombing, but there are other things as well. You will see in, in my analysis, in part four of my uh, series, which will premiere tonight, you will understand, you will really truly understand why they bombed the Iranian embassy now and why there have been other things like this happening across the world. I'll, le I'll leave that to tonight's premiere. But th this, this just confirms, I already had everything ready. It was going to premiere anyway, but I'm going to add this as well because it just confirms and underscores everything that I've been saying and, and everything, the, the pattern that the Israelis have been adopting uh, for the last months, which is draw the US in, escalate, and, and uh, you know, uh, behave chaotically. I mean, chaotically is, is uh, if the Israelis would bomb, for example, the Chinese embassy. This is, this is not exactly chaotic. It's vindictive, is how I would describe it. I mean, they're, they're out of their minds. They really are. They're truly out of their minds.
when I when I saw this, when I saw this, I I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, the, nothing the Israelis do should surprise you, but but nevertheless, they they're always good at shocking you. Nevertheless, they they stoop lower and lower and lower. I know the Iranians will retaliate anyway. The the this is only a question of when. I wouldn't blame them if they retaliate now, but perhaps it would be wiser to ret retaliate later, at a time of their choosing, as they say, or to, ha to retaliate indirectly. What do I mean by that? I mean by Yemen, for example. Uh, and, and we haven't even heard Yemen's response yet. We haven't even seen the response from the resistance. And they will respond. I guarantee you this. Mark my words. Write them down. Etch them into stone. The resistance will respond just of their own accord, right? The, of their own accord, they will respond. But what I'm saying is that the Iranians should perhaps ask the Yemenis, and the Yemenis will, will probably do this anyway, but I'm saying that they should do this as, a, as a, an official thing, to ask them to really ramp up the blockade. I mean, nothing, nothing goes past. You want to blame someone? Go blame the Israelis. It's their fault. But there's nothing passing now. Too, too bad. It's closed. Red Sea's closed to everyone. That's it. That's how it's going to be. And I must say something. I have to say something here, which is going to, uh, it's not going to please a lot of people, but I don't care because I'm going to say it anyway. Where are the Russians and the Chinese? The Russians and the Chinese support Syria. They support Yemen. They support Iran. They support them in many ways. They give them weapons. They give them political support. But I'm sick of seeing Israeli planes roaming freely inside of Syrian airspace. I refuse to accept that the Russians... They, they don't have the capability to shoot down Israeli planes, or not to shoot them down, but to scare them off by, by locking onto them with the uh, surface-to-air missiles, the S-300s and S-400s. The Russians, if they wanted to smuggle these units, well, not smuggle, sorry, actually, on the contrary, if they want to bring these units in for themselves, not to give to the Syrians, but for themselves, the, the Israelis wouldn't dare touch those units. They wouldn't dare touch them. So I, I, I refuse to accept that the Russians cannot do something about these bombings that the Israelis carry out, you know, uh, when they please. As I said earlier, 10 minutes ago, they've been bombing Syria hundreds of times. I mean, it, it, almost every two weeks they, they carry out some bombing. Forget, forget the war in Gaza. It's got nothing to do with it even because they've been doing this since, they've been doing this since 10 years now. Where are the Russians? Where are the Chinese? They're not doing enough. They're doing... They're doing something, but they're not doing enough. I'm sorry, this is my opinion, and, and uh, I, I believe that the, the evidence supports it. You may not agree, but that's how I feel. Let me show you. And by the way, I'm showing you a tweet from, from uh, Asad Abu Khalil, and he, he would say the exact same thing that I just told you. And he did, as a matter of fact, when I interviewed him yesterday, the interview will be premiering soon. Uh, let me show you what he wrote. He said, by attacking an Iranian diplomatic site, in Damascus, Israel has already bombed Syria, Iran, Lebanon, Palestine, and Egypt in this war alone, all in the name of self-defense. Self-defense, according to the Western Genocide Axis. It's a great term, right? It's a great term, self-defense. You can do whatever you want with it. Oh, yeah, we got to bomb the Syrians. It's self-defense. <laughs> the Israelis really think that they're clever, you know? They think, they think everyone is stupid. They really think that they're clever. The Israelis will get what's coming to them. Mark my words. You can also mark these words because you cannot behave like this and get away with it. I, I, I don't care what the Israelis imagine in their heads. They think, oh, Syria's down for now. It hasn't recovered from the war. I, I guarantee you this. It's not me who wants to do this or doesn't want to do this. I'm just telling you as a journalist, as an analyst, what is going to happen. In the future, at, at some point... This could be maybe ne next week, it could be in a hundred years, I don't know. But in the future, every single airstrike the Israelis carried out on Syrian soil will be repaid tenfold, twentyfold. Every airstrike the Israelis carried out on Palestinians, on Syrians, on Lebanese will be repaid to them a hundredfold. I guarantee you this. In one form or another, at one point or another in time, this will be repaid. There is no escaping this. What goes around comes around, and sometimes it comes around tenfold. <laughs> They're not going to succeed in dragging Iran into a war either, because the Iranians... Look, look how the Iranians have, have beefed up the entire region. 
Look how they've kitted them out. Look how they've kitted the entire region out. Anti-ship ballistic missiles. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise. ATGMs. Anti-tank guided missiles. Look, look, look at Hezbollah today. How did Hezbollah get to this point from 10 years ago, 20 years ago? That's, that's because of Iran. So the Iranians know what they're doing. And the Israelis hate it so much. They hate it so much that they behave like this. They go and bomb the embassy because they just cannot get around it. They, they want to direct confrontation and Iran keeps saying no, no. But we'll have, we'll have our friends confront you since you're occupying their soil anyway and you deserve it. But uh, you're not getting a direct confrontation from us. That's it. The, stu the stupidity, the, 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 the ignorance, the destruction, it's, it's really something. I mean, that they, they actually did this. They are out of their minds. The Israelis are, are foul lunatics. H how can you look at this and not say that these people are terrorists? They are out of their minds. They are out of their minds. It's, it's, you know, this is not the Iranians who are coming to the Israelis and bothering them. And this, you know, is some kind of warranted response. You are coming to the Middle East. No one forced you to go from Ukraine to Palestine and to start killing people. No one forced you to do that. You chose to do that. You're the, you're the threat. You're the aggressor. No, no one cares about your religion. Stop bringing up your religion. I don't, I don't care what you are. You're Jewish, you're Muslim, Christian. Get out of Palestine. This, this is not going to go unanswered.